I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Solenton Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul-tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years, focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. The Weekly Rune is now available in full on Patreon.com. Just do a search for Kelly Harrell to find it, and you can find the archive of all past rune casts on my site, soulintentarts.com. If you're not sure what a half-month is or what the runic calendar is, Listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune. It's explained fully at the beginning of every runecast. Thank you to everyone who listens to the podcast, to those who send notes and share their experiences of the runes. That's what it's all about, and I'm grateful for the engagement. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the podcast and the RuneCast possible with their financial support. If you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can find at soulintentarts.com or Amazon, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal or Square, or by contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. You can also subscribe to the paid version of the Weekly Rune there, and thank you for it. We're in the half month of Thurisaz, and this rune pertains to matters of the unconscious pushing through into our conscious life. Thurisaz is about the lightning strike of what's just below the surface forcing its way into our awareness. In this week's runecast in particular, though, the framing runes make Thurisaz a community matter, not an individual one. So when we talk about a community's unconscious, we're talking about agreements and beliefs we've all made at an individual level, you know, either consciously or unconsciously, and we've literally created systems from them. We've all contributed to a pool of agreement that we hold everybody to. These can be family systems, ancestral systems, nation state, planet wide, human wide, all being wide. We're talking about the intricate interweaving of individual patterns into huge collective tapestries for thousands of years. As animists, every thread in these tapestries is a living being and every tapestry itself is a golem of all of those threads and and once you create a golem life force like that in egregore it develops agency and will you don't hear people talking about the will part too much because if you talk about the will then you have to accept that the agency of a thing may be threatening but the core focus of that will and agency is that it doesn't want to die, just like you, just like me. It's going to do what it has to do to stay alive. In the place where the community unconscious, this, this field of interwoven threads and tapestries, where it becomes problematic is when it's full of wounds. Not necessarily intentionally inflicted wounds, but nonetheless The system's function is to stay alive, whether it's a a good system or, or not so good, beneficial or harmful. Its drive is to stay alive, which means it's inadvertently keeping those wounds alive. Or at least when that tapestry is formed, it is intentionally causing harm. That's an entirely other level of complexity. When we're talking about intentionality versus um, this kind of accidental creation of streams, 
it's a it's a complexity in soul tending that we have to account for. And what we're learning right now is that many of our human systems are wounded and they are perpetuating that wounding through their base drive to stay alive. That's something to sit with, right? The idea that racism, whiteness, patriarchy, colonization, sexism, homophobia, even industrialization in the way that we've manifested, capitalism, like all of those aren't just socio-eco-political ways to keep the 1% in power and by default keep the groups they marginalize down. These systems are alive. They are beings. They are life force that does not want to die. And what's more, right? There's more. We've all contributed to it one way or the other however intentionally or unintentionally we're all carrying and sustaining these life forces maybe that's intentional maybe it's not and we're all feeling the toll these systemic life forces are taking we are bearing those wounds not just in our own lives but unless we have our wake-up calls around where we're sustaining We're also bearing them to our descendants, not just our lineage descendants, but all of the descendants on the planet. So let's talk about humanity. Let's talk about community. A saying that was really popular in 90s New Age circles was that the plight of the planet was all or nothing. Like, you know, to make it to the fifth dimension, it was all or nothing. Not just all the humans had to rally on the same team, but the rocks, the air, the thunder, all of life force in this plane had to rally to the same side, all or nothing, to make it to the fifth dimension. Yeah, I never knew what it meant either. And everybody I asked either stumbled through their answer or didn't have one. they just stare at me blank. And, you know, they'd say something about love and light and vibrations. It was really weird. I mean, for its own reasons, it was really weird. But it, it was particularly odd to me because it didn't match the things that the church had taught me in my childhood. See, I'm one of those people who doesn't find a big difference between the early teachings of the church and new age movement. I don't see a whole lot of difference there at all, really. And so this one was, was weird because the church, their, their version of this whole rapture thing was that the good were always going to be taken care of no matter what the sinners did. There was going to be judgment. And with the new age jargon, I didn't understand a rationale in which the people who were causing the problems would tip the balance for everybody. Like I could, I could be okay with people who were screwing things up, but they were the only ones who had to deal with the mess. But the idea that the people who were screwing things up were going to screw it up for everybody just didn't seem right. They're supposed to be left behind, right? While everybody else is raptured and that the deal, they have hell on earth. In the New Age, though, it was different. They had a different perspective. Um, Their idea was this is the ascension. But there was also a whole lot of condescension. There was definitely a projection that certain people were better than others. And those other people were the problem. (laughs) They were the ones not getting with the program. And, you know, so there was still this projection that good people were going to be held back because of the sheep which meant we would all miss the fifth dimensional enlightenment bus. And there was a deadline. Nobody said what it was. I don't know if they knew what it was. But but early on there, there was a timestamp on this ascension. And with that urgency came the idea that everybody was still going to get taken care of, even the ones who caused us all to miss the enlightenment bus. And the people who were in the know were the ones that would have to clean up the mess. And they weren't happy about it. So again, condescension, if not condemnation, another version of hell on earth. Fast forward to winter solstice. Y'all know where I'm going, right? 2012. That was a big 
deal in the New Age community, even the ones that were more academic and grounded, um, or, or at least, you know, as, as whiteness interpreted, this was the end of the existing Mayan calendar, and it was supposed to be this point that we all started living out of our higher consciousness, just like that. Wake up the next day, boom, enlightenment. That's how we conscripted or, or even appropriated what the end of the Mayan calendar might mean in the New Age upgrade to the fifth dimension. In my mind, that is the point that marked a couple of things. That, that's when I started going, huh, what's up with this? It marked the turning point of the New Age as we knew it. I would say the 60s through the early 2000s, um, it began the Great Disillusionment. That's the point that people started to realize they couldn't love and light their way through hard things. Winter solstice of 2012 truly is where that tone in the general spiritual New Age community changed. And it changed quick. That whole law of attraction thing, people started turning on it. I saw so many people saying things like, well, I thought things were going to get better. Or, you know, why is there still so much drama? And I, I took that on in my blog, in, in Intentional Insights, about transition to higher consciousness equals shit show, surprise. None of it is going to go down without a fight. Because it's alive. It doesn't want to die. You know, what, what did we think it was going to look like? If we look back, winter solstice of 2012 was also a wake up to the second thing, which was privilege. And we have been struggling against seeing that for what it is ever since. Because we have to understand that these conversations about who's rapturing into the afterlife or who is ascending to the fifth dimension, it isn't really about good and bad people, good and bad deeds. It's about who's privileged and who isn't. And using our warped perspectives on spirituality to justify how we treat people in this life. What does all of this have to do with Thorisaz and tending the community unconsciousness? Well, everything. First of all, whether we're talking about the rapture or the new age version of all for one, one for all, moving into the next higher dimension, no matter how you're phrasing it, it's always come across with the self-righteous projection that you had to get on the right team or you're going to be left behind. And, and left behind can mean judged forever. You either allied or you were destroyed. And, and I never could get behind that because it's such a, a perfectionist, supremacist, like binary. Just I couldn't get it. So here's the thing about all for one and the community unconscious tending Thorisaz connection. Yeah. See, they were right. <laughs> Those old ass tapes were right but like so many of the other old ass tapes they were incomplete and as a result of their own biases as a result of being golem life forces themselves that don't want to be fully seen we couldn't work with them in their full capacity so yeah, they were right. We are all for one as animists. We already are one. And we say that all the time in the spiritual communities, but it's in a bypass kind of way. It's in a everybody's equal. Can't we all just get along? I don't see color. That's not this. That's bullshit. And it's harmful and it's wrong. And the news flash is we have to feel that. We have to feel the animistic component that makes us all connected. We have to live it in a felt sense. Hashtag be your community for really real. And that means that we have to delve into that community unconscious and take responsibility for what in it is ours. What in it is our ancestors that has not been reconciled. The lie of separation is real. The lie of separation is a living life force that we reclaim our power from by embracing where we've supported it and reconcile that support. If we all do it. 
if we will all allow ourselves these realizations and take deep soul action to tend them all the way through to reconciliation. And that's, that's huge. I mean, that's what we're being faced with right now every day. What is your mess? What have you contributed? Are you cleaning it up? When we reconcile how we have fed these systems, these golems, we withdraw our power from them. We get our power back to do with as we will. The golem can't survive without our power, and the reclamation of our power is its death walk. So yeah, vote, be an activist, be an accomplice in revolutionizing how the needs of your community are met for everyone in it. Those literal actions you take are important. And do the soul tending. This is the part where being an animist isn't enough. You're going to have to find someone who does soul tending. Someone who has these skills and can help you do this part. Who can help you find the places where you have been responsible. You go in your life and you make the changes in how you live day to day and you find Someone who is a soul tender that can help you reclaim your power from those systems. That is where the personal overlaps into the community unconscious completely. You know, we got this reset from all the wisdom traditions of the focal point a few months ago. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with that, then you need to go back and read the weekly rune entry for Burkana in March. We got that reset. It has been done. This is the part of the collective work that is ours to do. And nobody but us can do it. 